this is matrix approximation four. What I want to do here really is um, <clears throat> look at a couple of basic examples that follow on from what we learned in the previous videos. One of them will just be breakdown of data. The other one will be more sort of real world predictive kind of a thing. But basically just think two examples. So consider this matrix. So I want to do one that's um, bigger than the previous one. So we can think about these as points in five dimensional space. So one, three, five, six, six, two, four, 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 three, three, negative one, 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 zero, and then a bunch of twos. I could have paused the screen and done this, but I'm basically there. Five, three, zero, three, three, and two, four, zero, negative one, four. So, I'll only write as much as we need to write to sort of get the point across here. But if we find the singular value decomposition, so what I'm gonna do is simply write down um, a small amount of information, right? So I don't wanna worry about the U's right now. Like we need them, but we're not changing them or altering them or any way, shape or form. The sigma, however, the sigma I do want to write down, it's five by six, but it's just got the singular values. So here we've got 15.0759. This might be a bit bigger than I'm making it. We've got 5.8017. We've got 4.2418. We've got 2.1720. We've got 1.5318. And we've got an empty row. So this is all, or an empty column rather. It's a bunch of zeros in here, just to be really complete. Because this is the diagonal matrix. And we've got our VT. So then we can, for example, say the total variance. This is the 15.0759 squared plus, et cetera, plus all five of those. If you do this, this is 286. Now, notice you can also get this by simply taking the lengths of the columns of A and adding them, squaring them, the lengths. Lengths of the columns of A, another word, well, yeah, the sum of the length squared. So you take the first column, take its length, square it, etc. So I'm going to ask a simple question here. It's a question we didn't deal with before. I'm going to say, well, suppose we want to simplify the matrix, but we want to preserve a certain amount of variance. Let's preserve 95% at least variance while getting as close as possible. So what we do is we look at the, the various combinations of singular values. So for example, if we keep two singular values, right, the top two, right? Because you want to keep the important ones because those are the ones that, um, that sort of contain the main directions. So what would happen is I would take those two singular values So in the proportion that we preserve is this. This is a 91.24. So in other words, keeping the top two singular values, the two principal directions, we only keep 91.24. Or another argument is we keep that much. That's a lot of the variance right there. Right? 
This is of the variance. Now if we keep three, seeing the values, then we get the 15.0759 plus the 5.8017 plus the 4.2418, all those squares over the 286, we do that, we get 97.53% the variance. So in other words, if we want to simplify this matrix, and by simplifying again, we're sort of getting rid of the, by that we mean we're getting rid of the directions in which the data has the least spread. So we're keeping the highest priority directions, if you like. In other words, we're eliminating the small directions. So we need to keep three singular values. So again, we're trying to achieve 95% or more while removing as many as possible. We have to keep three. So if you were to take sigma and remove the other two, right, so back in the matrix on the left, if you were to remove these guys, right, the green ones, and then recalculate. So remove the other two, let's say to get sigma prime, then if we calculate a prime, which we'll say that's the u sigma prime v transpose, the result we get is as follows. So I'm gonna to pause to fill this in because there's a bunch of numbers here. I'll fill them into a couple of decimal digits, just enough to see what's going on. So there's a result. So here's the thing. If you compare this to the original a, right? so compare these two, like literally look at the entries. Right. They are pretty close. Right. Now, you might argue the A prime is more complicated because it has, um, you know, there are more digits, you know, it looks a bit more confusing, but in a real meaningful way, it's a lot simpler. The data is a lot simpler. We've got rid of two directions of spread. And it turns out, <clears throat> and we'll see this when we talk about image compression, that it actually sort of takes less memory to store this new matrix than the old matrix. So. Um, a, the point is that A prime is close to A, right? It retains 97.53% of the variance. So what I'll do next is let me clear the screen and um, I'll do an example where we can actually talk about application of this in terms of sort of data analysis and predictions. So here's an example. So suppose you collect a bunch of data and we'll call the, the data, we'll say points in R3. And so you put all these points into a matrix. And so there are a whole slew of them. I think in the, I'm copying the ones out of the textbook. There are 10 of them. Let me pause and fill these in. So let's say the following, right? So we're thinking of these are points in R3, so we're thinking like X's, Y's, and Z's. Now, suppose you had a situation like this. Suppose you knew, or you were interested in a Y value of 100. You don't have a data point with 100, right? You've got nothing even close to 100. But you might say, what might X and Z be? And maybe how confident you can be in those, right? And all you have is this slew of data, all right? So maybe you do something like the following, right? You take this matrix A and we find the SVD. So I will write these out. So we have negative 0.15, negative 0.26. These are our columns that are, the, that are unit vectors, linearly independent, or unit vectors and perpendicular rather also linearly independent, but 
This is three by three, it's pretty small, pretty small. Then we have um, our sigma, which is you know three by ten, like the one above it, but most of the entries are zero. Because these are the only three that are non-zero. And then we have a bunch of zeros. Seven columns of zeros. And we have V transpose, which we're not going to care about so much. And so what we see here is really interesting that if we look at the total variance, just in the U1 direction, so the variance that captured in the U1 direction, so remember this is, this is this very first direction. Right, that's 317.49 squared over the sum of all those variances. So if you do this, this is a 99.3879. Now, the fact that that number is so large is essentially saying that the data is one dimensional. It essentially goes in the direction of U1. So what that means is the data essentially looks like this, right? So the, all the data is essentially multiples of that vector. Now they're not exactly that, but you know, capturing 99.3879 of the variance they are, which means they all look like, let's say all data is, is essentially of the form some constant times that vector. So for various C. Which means if we want to look at where Y equals 100, right, what we do is we say it, we find the C, right? We take the negative 0 0.026 C and we set it be, to be equal to 100. We get C is equal to, I'm doing some approximation here. In the book, I had a few more digits. I don't want to do too crazy. So we take that C, we multiply it by that vector. And we get, again, these are all little bit approximations. Right, so what we've got is an X and a Y. And there's some reliability. These are, fa these are fairly reliable because we've captured most of the variance. Now, of course, if you had done this analysis, right, this is just a very simple example. If you had tried this and you had found out that, that the variance wasn't mostly in the U1 direction, it was in the U1 and the U2 directions, then what you find is the data is not really in one direct, in one dimension, right? So as a side note, what's going on visually here in an example like this, let me uh, pick a color just to point it out, is all of these are points in R3. And so what we found is that if we had like a, I won't draw an axis, but if we, if we plotted these points, they mostly follow like a, like a line, right? Along the direction of U1. And that's what most of this data looks like. And so when we make a prediction, we only need one of the three and we can figure out the other two, right? If you had a case where most of the variance required two singular values, then what's happening is most of your data sort of forms a plane. It's stretched out in two directions. And you've got maybe, maybe one of the directions is longer than the other. <clears throat> maybe in three dimensions, it's mostly spread out like an ellipse kind of shape. 
And then, you know, in a worst case scenario, if all the singular values were kind of close, you know, because you don't necessarily have to have one singular value that's really, really high. If they're all close, you kind of get a sphere, kind of a, you know, it's all spread out in all directions. And so in our case, it's the first case, all right? And that's the direction right here that it's spread out is along that line. You have all these points that are floating around it. And then once we chose a different different y value, you could sort of go along the line and say, well, which, which point on the line has that y value? We go, bam, that's the one. And we get our data. So um, I'm going to stop there. That's the end of that video. That's the end of that section. Now we could do a little bit of data analysis, um, a little bit of understanding what the data looks like when we plot it, sense of directions, etc., things like that.